Aren't you tired of every time that you create a new post-processing volume and you try to start playing with exposure or the metering mode or whatever, it doesn't work? And then you remember that it's because down there, there is this infinite extent unbounded and you need to play with that first. Well, that's on you. That is because you are still under the control of whatever Epic sets on your tools. So it's time for you to start creating your own tools. And this is exactly what we're going to do in this short video. So follow along. For this to actually work, we're going to need to actually enable a couple of plugins. So you're going to go to your edit plugins and you're going to search script table and you're going to need both the scriptable tools editor mode and the scriptable tools framework. Enable those two and restart your engine. Once it's restarted, you're going to create, you know, a nice place in your content browser, right? Like tools. And from here, the next thing that you need to do is actually right click and you are going to your editor utilities and you're going to create an editor utility blueprint. Not an editor utility widget. This is another thing. It may do the exact same thing. In fact, whatever we're going to do right now, you can do with a normal blueprint, but just accessibility is going to be great, right? For our case. Let's click here. And of course, yeah, Epic is going to throw at us, you know, all the different classes that we can actually use. In our case, we're going to need the click. Yep, exactly. And as you see, there is the uh, interactive tool. And then we have a couple of classes down here. There is one that is called the scriptable click and drag. This is not the one that we need. We want the scriptable single click tool. Don't choose the category, choose the actual class. And this is it, all right? So editor scriptable single click tool and click select. That's it. Let's call it whatever it's going to be. In this case, is going to be the unbounded pass processing volume. All right, perfect. Once that is done, let's double click on it. And this is what we get. Exactly a blueprint editor. In this case, we can do a couple of fun things. So first of all, let's call our tool a name. And in this case, it's going to be the ultimate. No, it's going to be the unbounded pass processing volume. All right. The long name unbounded post processing volume. And in the category, it's going to be the amazing category. And the tool tips, you can say this will uh, create an unbounded post processing volume, whatever, whatever. All right. This is good. Once you're here, as soon as you compile and save, if you move this down here and you go to your modes, and you select the scriptable tools modes, you're going to see that right away we have access to that particular tool that you're creating. It's going to be a one single click button right here. And as you see, as you hover over it, it will show whatever tool tip that you assign to it and the amazing category. So let's start creating what we need. So the first thing is that we need an actual event. And the event that I use, I don't know if this is normal, but it does work for me. So what I do is I go and create an on setup, event on script setup. This is the one that I use. It does work. So if you want to follow, this is going to be fine. All right. So the next thing is exactly what we need to do. And that is to actually spawn an actor. So we're going to do a spawn um, actor for, from class. This is good. Uh, the actual class, and this is going to be tricky, uh, the class that we need uh, is not a blueprint, strangely enough. So it's not going to be here. If you search for pass processing, nothing's going to come, right? We need to actually find for it. So the way that we're going to find it is control space, and that will bring up our uh, content drawer, right? Let's save everything. And um, if you want to actually see what we need to see, you're going to need to go to settings, be sure that you have show C++ classes, show engine content, and show plugin content, right? After you have those three enabled, you're going to be able to go to your engine and you're going to search for exactly past process volume. And it's going to be right here. And as you see, it's a C++ class. But anyways, it's a class. It's not in the main menu here, but you can actually use the 
assign asset, and that's it. It is ready. All right, so the next thing, thing is that this will create a normal post process, right? And it's going to be not unbounded, and that is not what we want. So this return value right here is going to give us, you know, exact reference of the actual actor that is going to be spawned, right? So whatever we perform through this place is going to, is going to be set on the actual actor that is going to be created, right? So let's drop this here and we're going to search for unbounded. And here it is, set infinite extend unbound. We're going to, you know, call it yes, true. And that is almost everything that we're going to need here. But right now, as it is, we can go and check and see if it works. So first of all, let's compile. We're going to get an error. And that is because these should be connected to some transform. But we can skip that by right clicking and simply splitting the struct. And that's going to fill everything with zero. So the original place is going to be in the origin of your level. And that is fine, right? And now if we compile and save, everything is good. Let's move this aside. Let's fire it up. As soon as we click here, there it is. We have an actual pass processing volume popping into existence into our outliner. And if we click on it, let's move this to the other side. And if we go all the way down, you're going to see that it's unbounded from the start. And that is exactly what we want. So as soon as I start, you know, playing with my exposure compensation, there it is. Oh my God, that should have like a seizure disclaimer. So it works. That is really good. Now, there is one small thing. This dude right here is asking us to actually complete whatever we just did, but it's already complete. It's just, you know, uh, something that we can omit. So for that not to be there, we're going to extend our script with one little new node, and that is going to be the shutdown. And is the request tool shit down and that's it we're going to leave it as it is we're not going to need an accept or a pop-up messages or whatever this is good as soon as you drop this this is fine so what this means is we can compile and save and the next time right let's yeah delete this one let's do it again and as soon as we click there nothing else is going to happen it's going to pop into existence it's going to be unbounded we're going to be able to start working with it uh, right away um, one last thing it's going to be, yeah, if I do a control C and trying to actually get rid of that thing, it will never go away because it doesn't go into the undo stack. Let's do that final step, right? To get everything really clean. And that is going to be, let's drag from our event on the script setup and let's uh, type transact and we're going to create a begin transaction. That's it. You can leave these as it is. No, um, you need actually to make a self-reference here. So type self and create a self-reference. That is good. If you want to have some sort of message in the actual uh, undo stack, you can actually say, well, this comes from the actual unbounded pass processing volume. And the description is yeah, the, the same. You PPV. And then at the end, after the shutdown, you can actually transact and you are going to end the transaction and that's it. Now this is completely done. And now you can actually do a complete and save and close. And the next time that you go here and you create your unbounded pass processing volume, you're going to be able to actually control C and it's going to be gone undo the UPPV. That's it. That is our class for today. <laughs> um, I mean, you can actually use and abuse this as much as you want. In fact, let me just show you this. I can, um, let me grab all these, right? This is, you know, the normal environmental actors that we normally have to create to actually start working in our scene. Oh no, it's here. The levels, let me turn out the lighting. So now there is no lighting. Uh, this is just um, Lumen having a bit of a seizure. And now I'm going to click here when it says environment or ENV. And that's it. I have a full set of environmental actors. I have my directional light, 
that happens to be in manual mode because my pass processing volume is in uh, Matrian manual and um, it has the conv convolution um, bloom settings and my skylight is real-time capture ready and my uh, exponent fog, uh, fog height is um, volumetric fog as, as well as my directional light has the light, the light shaft occlusion. So I have my full, the normal things that I always do in, in a scene. Um, I have it with one click and I can undo it and I can recreate it with just one click. Click. And that is amazing. If you want to see how this looks, let me just show you. I save it in the actual engine content. Um, just make sure that you have a copy of it because every time Unreal Engine changes version, it will basically delete it. This thing has like an R2 folder. Uh, so I, I put it there mainly because, you know, it's going to be present in all my projects. So every time, if you have it, it's going to appear here and you're going to be able to use it. Let me show you how this looks. It's, yeah, it's just this, right? If you want to check how this looks, I am going to be adding um, a link to these one-click environmental lighting. It's going to be on my art station page. So yeah, go there, download it, all right? And if you find it, good. You can actually donate to this you know, link right here. So, all right, if you want it, it's going to be here. And yeah, that's it. Be good to each other. And remember that I love you all. And I will see you on the next one. Bye.